Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I'm going to be going over M Guitar Architect. Last week I did like a preview and showed you some things you could do with this, but today I'm going to be going into it a little bit more and show you how you can turn on and off effects. And I don't mean just one, because that's fairly simple, you just click on it. But if you want to turn on your overdrive and your delay at the same time, I'm going to show you how to do that. And of course you could expand that much farther if you wanted to. But let's get into it. Let's make our first sound here. So we have M Guitar Architect open. Let's add an amp. Let's try KC Special. Let's add a cabinet. Just choose whatever you like here. It's really up to you. I'm just going to choose something quickly. And then let's add a reverb here. Make sure to turn the length down, turn the ducking down. Let's hear it. That sounds pretty good. Now let's add in a distortion pedal. I'm going to click amp again. You're probably thinking, why are you doing this? But I'm not adding an amp. I'm going to click pedal here. And let's just choose something in here. Let's choose MD1. Turn this up a little bit and let's hear it. I think that's enough. And now let's add a delay in right before the reverb. Ooh, delay here. Now let's move this up. I think around 400 is good. You can set this however you like, as I said. Spread it stereo wise, turn the mix down a bit like this. Now let's hear it. Okay, so we have our basic sound. I think this is sounding all right. Maybe I can use a little bit more distortion here, but set it however you like. We have this now, and what we want to do now is turn this on and off. So before I start messing with anything, I don't really like having two amps here just because this might confuse me. So I'm going to rename this. I showed you this in the last video. Just right click it, go to rename. I'll just call this OD for overdrive. Click OK, click yes, and close it. And now we have these named correctly, or at least the way I like it. Let's go to multi-parameters and we're going to set up a multi-parameter to turn the overdrive and delay on and off. So go to multi-parameters here. I'm just going to click on this and click clear and learn and click on the button for this MD1 and the delay. Okay. Now let's click the number one again. And you see we have both of them in here like this. I'm gonna name this lead here. And now you'll notice as I turn this all the way down, it turns both of them down. If I turn it up, it's off. So if I go in, here like this. So this is turning things on and off. This is great. If you wanted to, during a song, you can just go into here, and I can select this as automation, and I can just you know, lift this up and set a track to have the distortion come on or the lead sound come on at certain times and off at certain times if you want this. Now from here, let's actually remove this envelope because I don't want the envelope on there. That's great, but what you're probably thinking is like, hey, I want to actually move this with, you know, MIDI. I don't want to, you know, just be moving this back and forth all the time. That's kind of a pain. Even with automation, it's like, I, I want to do it myself because maybe there's certain parts in the solo I feel like, ah, I want to, you know, turn on the like phaser or delay, etc. What we need to do for that is we need a MIDI controller, if you have one, and then we need to set up a MIDI track. This will of course depend on your DAW, but here in Reaper I need to set up a separate track to route the MIDI in. So I'm just going to add a track here. I'll just name this MIDI input. I'm going to select my MIDI input here, like this, arm it, and Let's just look here to make sure our MIDI is going in. Okay, we see something there, perfect. Now, we're going to take this track and send the MIDI into M Guitar Architect here. Then we can just slide this over like this. It's sending audio too, but there's no audio you know, being input, so it's only gonna send the MIDI. Make sure the MIDI is going in there. Okay, it looks like it is. 
Now we have everything set up, but we want the MIDI to control this. So what we're going to do is on this lead here where we have all of this set up, we're going to go click it in that little uh, three lines here, and it has MIDI learn. Go to this. It has controllers, but we're not going to, even going to use that for now. We're going to use notes. I'm using a uh, FCB1010. I know it's a really popular one, but you can use anything for this. You could even use a MIDI keyboard if, if you wanted. Uh, but we're going to use notes to turn this uh, lead on and off. So click enable. Over here, first turn it on by clicking it. Then go into whichever parameter you want. In this case, we're using parameter one, which is named lead. Click OK. Now, over here, this is a little bit of the tricky part. If you set it to logarithmic like this, you'll notice like, hey, it's not doing anything. Why is nothing working? What we want to do is set this to turn on and off. So we're going to go in here and you think like, oh, use on and off. This is great. But what happens is when you push down the controller, as soon as you let your foot off, it's going to turn off. And we don't want that. We want it to be on as soon as we uh, touch it. And then we don't want it to turn off until we touch it again. So for that, we're going to use switch. Now it has a note here and you can set it manually like this, but if that's, you know, too much trouble, like I don't even know which note it is. Just click learn and stomp on whichever controller you have or whichever pedal you have. So I'm going to click learn and I'm going to stomp on my controller. Now, when I did that, the note it sent out was note zero or C negative one. Now to test this, just stomp on your controller again and see if it moves your lead. In this case, it did. So that means it should work. Let's test it out by actually turning the sound on. So in this case, worked perfectly, no problems. And now, as you can see, we can switch these two on and off by using MIDI. However, you can use more if you want. You think, oh, I need more than this. I need three or four. We can do that. But let's say you wanted to like blend between this. Let's take this off for a second. I'm going to turn these on manually. So let's say I don't actually want to turn these completely on and off. I'm going to click clear and learn. And this time I want it to go from here to about there. And I want my delay go from the mix about 30 to zero like this. Okay. Now, instead of turning them on and off, I'm going to be adjusting the values in this way. So you turn it on so you can hear what it sounds like. So now I'm blending between that and I can, instead of going all the way, I can do kind of halfway here. Great, right? Now I could do the same MIDI thing I did before, but that's just going to move it from 0% to 100%. Now if I have some kind of expression pedal or something, or even a, I guess a mod wheel on a uh, keyboard, you could use that, but we're going to do the same thing and just blend it. So I'm going to click MIDI learn again. Before I had it in notes, I'm just going to turn this off. I don't want that enabled. I want it to use this. So I have this and it's set for modulation wheel, but I'm going to click learn here and push the expression pedal on my MIDI controller there. So what I had was volume, but now if you look, as I move this, it will move between them smoothly. So let's try it out. So as you can hear, I can blend between these. I can kind of do a 
halfway here. Ooh, if I can control my controller correctly. So that's a kind of fun and expressive thing you can do with that. I'm not too good with that. And unfortunately, the way I have things set up here, I'm using with my left foot, so I'm not too good with it. But of course, you could do much better. And I think this is a kind of basic example, but of course, you can use more than one or more than two multi-parameters here, or sorry, parameters here. You can actually control all sorts of interesting things. So I would recommend try it, have fun with it, and come up with all sorts of new and expressive sounds that way. So if you have any questions, leave those down below. If you like this, give me a thumbs up and check out all the other plugins at melterproduction.com. Till next time, see you.